Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper End Corner. We have none other than Crossy, starting as the Blue Zerg bottom left hand corner. We have Dogecoin Holder, which I believe is Terror, starting as the Pink Terran. Very stylish color, and I'm going to have to stick with these colors, even though I kind of want to do a color swap. This is going to be on Largo. Terror, BSL, I actually should say that DeWalt, uh, Terror, Boneth, really arguably it's one of those three in the top three in the Foreigner community. Um, and kind of interchangeable. They're just playing next level right now. Terror, BSL champion. As of late, DeWalt, BSL champion. A uh, couple times. Actually, I should look at how many times that DeWalt's taken it. And really, the argument is around, okay, who's the best player? Is it Terror? Is it DeWalt? Um, is it Boneth? And it kind of seemed, at least in the last handful of years, it seemed to cycle uh, between those three. So Crossy's going to have his work cut out for him. Crossy, arguably the best player in North America right now and has absolutely been playing next level. If you've been watching the NA team battles, uh, you've just seen his uh, level of play. So this is going to be really indicative of, and basically this is one of the best matchups you can get, period. It is in kind of a preview of BSL at large and why you should be watching the top level BSL matches. Overlord being produced first here for Crossy. <clears throat> this is one of those larger macro maps. I'll be interested to see what kind of build order Terrid opts uh, to go for. It looks like he's going to go ahead and drop his barracks first, not going for a front door seal, and not going for it on the low ground just yet. <clears throat> looks like we're going to see a 12 hatch from Crossy on the other side of the map. Going ahead and grabbing his natural expansion now. Um, Crossy, he, out of the three matchups that I've seen him play, I and this is just, this is not uh, saying that, his ZVT is weak in any way, shape, or form, because it is not. But I think out of the three matchups, that is his weakest matchup. Um, and, but not by like such a significant margin where I'm going to be like, oh yeah, Terra's going to take this hands down, no problem, without a lot of effort. Finds the Overlord in the upper left-hand corner, which lets him know that Crossy's in the upper right, so starting to move his way there. It looks like Crossy's going to, has his drone scout, it's going to take some time. Refinery already up. Three SCVs in gas, which suggests, are we going to see a factory only or a factory opening? Because, yeah, I believe so, because this barracks has remained silent thus far. So it looks like we're going to see a factory build. Potentially a 1-1-1, but oftentimes what's, uh, what I've seen many Terran do recently is go for kind of a guardian build, get, get the plus one weapons, get massive amounts of guardians, and then just force uh, Zerg to kind of play in this uncomfortable position where they need to macro up in a particular way. Crossy going ahead and seeing that first Marine is being produced. I'm wondering if it is going to be a pure 1-1-1. One, one, one. We'll go have to see. Uh, this is really what has forced a lot of Zerg players, this opening mech style, and the popularity of it. That's really what's forced a lot of Zerg players more towards the two hatch mutilists. Can we already see a morph to layer? Two Zerglings out. To go ahead and try to capture that drone already actually coming back to home base. I actually like that immediate decision to get this drone, uh, this drone back as quickly as possible because part of the thing in this matchup when it starts going to mech is it really becomes a macro race. It becomes a race between Zerg being able to get a large enough attack force to shut down the mech because here's the thing. If you can wipe out that mech army once or twice, you end up in a much better position to just win overall because mech units are so expensive. It's not medic it's not medic marines where there's cheap and you can just afford to lose them and replenish them. You really need to get something accomplished with that army. SV Scout still alive. Sutton Colony down preventatively spire there as well. There's the initial vulture out. And it looks like we are going to see two factories. So it's not going to be one one one. We are seeing a second factory plop down rather than a starport. Sutton Colony should help deal with that Vulture. Looks like that SCV was killed in the main. In the meantime, these Zerglings need to hold back and stay in position. Actually wandering out. Briefly going to take a free shot. But a decent amount of counter damage done on that Vulture. Second gas being grabbed with these Vultures out. That's also going to make it a little bit more difficult for Crossy to sneak out and grab an additional hatchery. So he's going to go ahead and plop that hatchery as part of a SimCity on his front door. Like this play. Grabbing that uh, third hatchery in the base. So he's going to field Mulisks most likely in not too long. That'll help deal. The question is, is in what numbers? If he's going to opt to go for that full Mulisk harass. 
or do an adjustment into something else. Second factory up that SCV wandering there forever. And there's that arm rate being built. Engineering Bay also going up. You need the turrets, you need the Goliaths to deal with that potential Mutalisk threat. Vulture just hanging out on the front door in the meantime. Spire being built. There's the initial five. And the other issue is with this is you really need to, you get Char and Booster upgrade. It's kind of a, the Mutalus Karas can be a critical part because you have a smaller number of Goliaths and you need to keep them alive. And it's basically just Goliaths and turrets to defend. Oh, the Vulture actually shoving through. I'm going to rewind. I'm going to do an uncharacteristic thing. I'm going to rewind a little bit because I was uh, negligent in seeing the three, the Vultures pushing their way through. So let's go ahead and bring it back up to the moment where they go ahead and sneak across to feel like this is a critical moment of the match overall. It's going to get there. So actually shoving their way in, able to get a handful of drone kills. That's actually very important because that's more economic disruption. That's also more time bought. I like that play on Terra's part. More time bought to go ahead and get turrets up, get more Goliaths on the ground. Because right now, he's got two Goliaths, two more Goliaths coming shortly. Charm Booster's still upgrading, and he's trying to get those turrets in place as six Mutalisks and two more to join for full number eight are moving out. I also love this Marine looking to maybe catch a drone for free. Finding the natural expansion. Goliaths grouping right there. First turret looks like it. I like the, the barracks is over the turret. Oof, and actually getting an initial Mutalisk kill. So Crossy diving in because he wanted to go ahead and pick off that initial turret, but I, I believe there was an SEV repairing underneath that barracks, and I think that was hidden from Crossy's view. So he decided to go ahead and dive and try to take that turret out, I believe, and ends up losing a Mutalisk instead because you had a group repair. That was that was a clever play. This Marine going to go ahead and get picked off. More Mutalisk being produced. And it looks like Crossy wants to end this sooner rather than later. He's getting Zergling speed. He's getting a lot of Zerglings. He wants to crush this immediately. While the Goliath count is small, third factory and fourth factory being placed down for Terror. So this is nine Mutalisks and a bunch of Zerglings starting to flood out. Additional Mutalisks are going to be grouping up. Looking for soft spots. Trying to drive the Goliaths. To, I like that. Actually trying to draw the Goliaths to the north so he can bring the Zerglings in underneath. The Zerglings pouring through. SCVs are going to need to come off the line to, to help defend this. This is going to be a critical stage of this. More turrets being built. The Zerglings able to get on those initial two turrets. A lot of SCVs being killed in free fall. The Zerglings not able to get on top of those Goliaths on the turn, but a lot of initial damage being done to Terra's economy. Certainly a decent amount of economic disruption. Crossy regrouping. The Zerglings looking for an opportunity to get on top of the Goliaths. And the SCVs trying to box those Zerglings back and doing a good job both directions. Mutalisks, several mules getting wiped out overhead, but Crossy doing a lot of economic damage. And critically... Stopping this natural expansion, this critical natural natural expansion. Here's the thing. When you're at this style of build, you need all as much economy as you can get rolling. More Zerglings flooding out. More Mutalisks being fielded. Another turret being placed immediately, and this turret needs to get finished ASAP. And you can just see the, the SEVs immediately getting fielded down here to get that economy rolling again. But more Mutalisks and more Zerglings diving in the Goliaths on the low ground. Again, trying to get up the ramp. The Zerglings look like they're going to be able to pick that up. The turret is up. Crossy backing off with these mules momentarily. Some SCVs having some... And this is just chaos at the natural expansion. Now, SCVs regrouping. It looks like that turret was finished. That's going to maybe get one shot off. It gets one volley off. Morgulai trying to group up. Crossy continuing to pound this natural expansion. He's got his this base up at the 3 o'clock in the meantime. And he's starting to pick away at what he can. More mules grouping up. I, that's... How many mules is this? That's... Seven Mutalisks versus that I, I going up and his plus one finish yet. Plus one armor is going to be finished momentarily. That's enough Goliaths to go ahead and push that back. But gas has not been mining in the interim. Razor thin margins. The worker count close to even overall. I like this engineering bay in the bottom right hand corner to provide some additional spotting, by the way. Crossy, not able to finish things off, but able to get a decent amount of economic disruption. The Mutalisk count continues to grow. He's got level one weapons starting to build now right now the upgrade advantage does go to terror 
He's still got a growing Goliath force, and this is about, it's an economic race, and it's about keeping your, it, it almost feels like it's uh, a balloon war. And what I mean by that is, is you've got two balloons inflating, and it's like, who can overwhelm the other one first? Mulus, in large numbers, engaging, disrupting the main now, able to take a turret down there, only three Goliaths here. Now, here's the thing, even, ter looks like, a, not Terror, Cross is going to go ahead and back off. Goliath's able to do a little bit of damage. You have to be careful and dedicate the right amount of Goliaths to these engagements as well, because if you over dedicate, if you under dedicate Goliaths, then oftentimes they just get picked off. It looks like another hatchery being plopped down at the three o'clock location. This is a well saturated base. And so Crossy going to go ahead and back off, feeling he's potentially done enough damage to go ahead and macro up a little bit. He's behind the overall supply count, and this is a scary count of Goliaths. I don't know if he's done it, to be honest, despite all of that harassment, because this is a big grouping of Goliaths that is starting to walk out onto the main, and this is not a lot of Mutalisks to engage this. There are enough hatcheries down, potentially, but you can just see the, 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 the and this is one indicative of good macro keeping the count low, but this is just not a lot of Hydralisks out in the field either. So maybe one good engagement and Crossy might be able to snap down, but as things look just pure right now. I think Terror has managed to hold on, get enough Goliaths that it is an overwhelming attack force. Starting to walk in to the three o'clock base, Hydralis is making their way down. I do not believe these have any upgrades. One Goliath getting picked off. The Mule is diving overhead, engaging. This is going to be a critical engagement here. Terror looks like the Goliaths are getting overwhelmed in the grouping between the Hydralisks and the Mutalisks, and they're getting picked off. So nice engagement from Crossy overall. And so the Goliath force getting wiped out, and that is a huge shift in momentum. More Goliaths are being fielded, but just the fact that that army was wiped out and there wasn't any economic cost on Crossy's side is enormous. Goliaths are expensive. Mutalisks moving up immediately. Looks like Crossy getting a little bit over aggressive. Two, do two donated for free. Five factories up, siege tanks, siege tech being upgraded to help get a couple siege tanks out to deal with the Hydralisks. But right now, Crossy in good position. Starting to move out with a bit of map control. He's already got Queen's Nest being built. Starting to get the Hydralisk upgrade. Getting Spines 1. One critical thing is if you can get Lurkers and Swarm out, it really devastates this army. Hydra Lurk does pretty well with Dark Swarm overhead against Mech. Because Goliaths are, you can think of them like, the one thing is, is sometimes you can use the Dark Swarm to work against uh, the Mutalisks. So it, it becomes an interesting late game where you have the Mutalisks that want to jump on top of the siege tanks. You have the Hydralisks that are trying to deal with everything else. And so if you can get Lurker in between there, uh, it can be absolutely beautiful. It looks like one Overlord going to get picked off. That is going to put Crossy in the red momentarily. Crossy ahead in supply briefly. Single Vulture being produced. Wonder with some mines. And it looks like Crossy is going to opt. So he's got the Queen's Nest out. He's not moving to Hive. He's actually going to opt to go ahead and get uh, Queens. So producing four Queens right here. This is another option. So first of all, Parasite can be really vital to keep an eye. Because you usually have one gigantic marauding mech army that you need to gauge on, on top of. So first of all, Parasite's very useful in this matchup. But on top of that, if you can just get enough energy built up... You can do mass brooding to take care of the tanks and then just hi have Hydralisks and everything else dive on top of everything and wipe out what's left. The problem is, is protecting the queens from the Goliaths. Queens do have this amazing, just incredible range of attack to drop spawn brooding, but it, the critical thing is, is, yeah, having that and also having the energy to deal with that mech army once it starts moving out. Science facility going up, double, or sorry, just single starport being grabbed. A single vulture managed to sneak through. Might be able to catch that drone and slow down an additional base. And you can see Crossy just kind of getting bunches of hydralisks to negate the vulture's ability to sneak around the map. Looks like a single mule is actually camping up or left. And this is at the stage where, an actually, interesting play. So critically, Terror going to go ahead and Grab his third. He's going to try to take this mineral only and slow play it. A trick with mech heavy armies like this is you really do need additional gas. 
And so two gas over time doesn't cut it. Single Vulture getting all sorts of scouting information in the meantime. But I love I, I love both these players' vision right now. You can see across he just sees a huge amount of the map, and you can see where this single vulture has managed to just scoot all over the place and get eyes on everything. Additional hatchery going up the mineral only for Crossy as well. We do see, and you can see the the mitos, meiosis, gamete meiosis being upgraded to go ahead and let queens spawn with more energy. They're starting to build energy now. Phenomenized carapace upgrading so the overlords can be a little bit faster around the map. Vultures, yeah. And Crossy starting to close the noose on that map control. Did I miss the engineering bay getting picked off? I must have missed the engineering getting bay getting picked off. Double engineering bay is being built. Three, Several engineering bays being built. Is this just a spot? Interesting play overall. Irradiate being upgraded. Some dropships being produced. So Terra just kind of grabbing all sorts of tech. I guess this is mostly to just make it so these units can't be targeted and what's underneath? Interesting. I haven't seen that before. A lot of Hydra is starting to be pouring out for Crossy. He's kept it even the supply count. And the Queens are moving forward. And this, this is almost like an inversion of typical TVZ. It looks like a lot of these Vultures Going to get wiped out. Engaging now. The Mutalisks diving into that third. There is the big siege tank line from behind. The Overlord's pouring forward to go ahead and absorb some shots from the Goliaths. The Hydalisks getting obliterated. Some nice broodlings from underneath. And the Queen's now backing off. But it looks like Terra is going to go ahead and back this off. The Hydalisks are going to try to pick off this command center before they're wiped out. Getting irradiated. And now having to back out of that third base. And it looks like Terror got the better of that exchange. Able to wipe out all sorts of Hydralisks. Didn't really suffer a lot of economic damage. And, and critically able to maintain his third group repair there. But critically still, with this map control, he needs to consolidate and potentially take an additional base. Because Crossy's economy continues to grow. Crossy moving out with more units. Those Hydralisks getting splatted once again. But Terra finding a bit of breathing room. This is turning... It's gonna... This is interesting. So the Queens... The grouping of Queens survives. Still a decent amount of Hydralisks. I'm looking for a potential drop as well. Trying to clear the mines. Engineering bays being used to forward spot. There's that dropship with vultures starting to move out. I'm going to go ahead and drop out that 5 o'clock location. And Terror grouping up so we can go ahead and feel free to take this 6. And I'm wondering if Crossy, i got to assume, whoops, that Crossy's going to see this dropship as it's moving across. So yeah, sees that dropship. Should be able to respond. I like that. I'm just going to tax him and moving vultures out as well. So there are plenty of Hydralists to go ahead and engage. Actually, only a single Vulture getting dropped and wiped out. But that's forcing these Hydralists to go ahead and stay back. In the meantime, and it looks like... In the meantime, some Vultures were able to sneak out. Currently, it is three... Well, technically four base, but not a well-saturated base. Versus two base Terran. Terran does need to take this six o'clock sooner rather than later and specifically get that gas up and running for himself. Level two weapons, level one armor, by the way. So looking pretty solid in that direction. Crossy, yeah, just needs to make sure that he has a sizable enough army to deal with this. I feel like his uh, economy, just sitting at 37 drones, 102 supply, I don't think he's in the spot he wants to be in. Idol is continuing to get pushed back as Terror just kind of sneaking forward. And I, these engineering bays actually playing a pretty big role in spotting. So now has the 6 o'clock. This is where potential drops, Hive Tech, by the way, upgrading and should be up. Potential drops could be a turnaround for Crossy if he can, or even like Queens, you can see diving in here. So a lot of turrets are going to be needed at these natural expansions. It's going to be a constant threat. Queens moving up, finding a single Vulture at that location. I'm wondering if some Hydals are going to be uh, dedicated to go ahead and engage that. Still looking 
for Hive Tech turnaround. Some Vultures finding some room to go ahead and sneak across, and it looks like Crossy trying to do some mine clearing to the north. The Queen's actually sweeping forward looking for the siege tanks to drop Broodlings. And actually catching a weak spot in Terra's army. Terra trying to back up. The siege tanks exposed. Two spawn broodlings dropped. Several more spawn broodlings dropped. And that is allowing the Hydralis to potentially sneak through. One irradiate dropped on that queen. So I think that is sufficient to go ahead and kill that queen. And Crossy going to back off otherwise. Not getting in a massive amount accomplished. But that is... Giving Terra a bit to think about. This is also buying Crossy time to go ahead and get, well, potentially get that Hive Tech up. We'll see some Hydralisks snuck in underneath. It looks like they're just latently attacking the Engineering Bay. The Queen's sneaking back out to get what they can. And actually Terra moving up might actually be able to get some drone kills. Try to keep an eye on that. Some more Siege Tanks going to be caught underneath. So nice win there from Crossy. Another Radiate, another two Queens dropping. Might want to replenish. Um, that attack for us. Oh, the Vulture just holding up just short. There are two Hydralisks right there. Try to keep an eye on what's going on there. This, so, so the Science Vessel is starting to sneak in. Where does Terror get the gas for this is my question. Vulture's also sneaking through. Hydralisks going ahead to try to engage and keep that map control light because this is very likely going to turn into a starvation match is who can produce more and starve out whom. Terror with a big lead in gas right, or sorry, a big lead in pure army right now. Hydralists are clearing the, the mines to the south. It looks like the Hydralists peeling forward, losing two to clear some mines there as well. More queens in production. What can become scary, it looks like another command center also floating out to the upper nine. What can also be scary late game is if you can get a Zergling Adrenal up and running because at a certain point, Zergling swarming in on top of the Siege Shanks and Goliaths can be very, very effective. Overlord finding that nine o'clock base being dropped. Terra continuing to mine up and push forward, it looks like, in the middle, playing long-term map control. And he's going to try to levy this position into going ahead and being able to hold this 9 o'clock. Some Hydralis camped. It looks like Crossy is now sit still sitting at three bases. His main is mined out. He's not yet grabbed a fourth or a fifth. And so I worry about his long-term economic position in this match. Has got more queens out. If he can keep the queens dropping... A sizable queen fleet here. If he can keep those queens dropping spawn broodlings on top of those siege tanks, definitely worthwhile. But critically, if he just lets Terror grab these bases, continue to macro up, continue to mass up, and if he doesn't grab bases himself, he is going to end up losing this match in the long term. Hydro's again clearing the mines, engaging these vultures. Level 3 weapons, level 2 armor, by the way, versus level 2 spines, level 1 armor. So big upgrade for... Big upgrade advantage for Terra currently. Again, replanting the mines, continuing to move these siege tanks forward. And it looks like basically what, what he wants to do is slowly cut this map in half. <clears throat> Deny Crossy bases. And just play a starvation match from there. Crossy now taking his 1 o'clock base, but as he's doing so, Vultures are right on top of it. Hydralisks moving in some... Not, and Crossy, I gotta say, being very disciplined and moving those Overlords in front of those Hydralisk fleets to make sure that mines aren't just blowing up and doing more damage than they could. Some Queens looking to sneak underneath. They might go ahead and try to take... That's a lot of turrets, though. That is a lot of turrets. Hydralis trying to clear the way. There are siege tanks underneath. This is a nice defense. An irradiate dropping. So it's going to be... But the siege tank's getting picked off. Vultures responding to this. Some science vessels as well. More radiates dropping on top of the queens. Crossy having trouble separating them right here. But here's the thing. If Crossy can move in and defend this and hold the 6 o'clock... Crossy's going to once again have lost an army and not... Have a lot to show for it. The Hydralis now moving in. It looks like they are going to be able to get some SCV kills. The Radiate's being dropped to try to clear the rest of that army up. More units starting to flood this direction to try to get more economic damage. The Queen's flooding down. Looks like they are going to catch a couple Siege Tanks. And it looks like the SCVs are starting to get cleared out of the 6 o'clock location. But Crossy needs to start mining at that 12 o'clock. His natural expansion is basically expended. He's essentially at two bases right here. 
So yes, he's cleared out the six o'clock base, but that nine o'clock base, that natural expansion, the mineral only are still working for terror. And he needs to get his own economy rolling to stay in this match. But right now, Crossy's opened things up, moving out to that mineral only, dropping some spawn broodlings there. More hydralists flooding in to the six. It looks like they're going to be able to wipe that out. They might be able to take out that mineral only as well. But a counterattack from Terror. He's going to go ahead and push in and take that 12 o'clock base out and maybe sweep around and take that mineral only. So it's going to be elimination versus elimination here. In the mid game, the Hydralis is just getting melted by those siege tanks. So six o'clock base was taken out. The mineral only was taken out, but Crossy critically losing that 12 o'clock. The Queen's moving in, wiping out those siege tanks. And the spawn rulings that are left look like they're going to be able to clean up what's left. So Crossy holding his mineral only also has that three o'clock base mining and he's relegated, but he's relegated terror to distance mining at his mineral only. And he's still mining at his nine. Still a decent supply lead for Terror. He's still got a huge amount of upgrades. Level 3 armor is going to be there in not too long. Crossy lost that 12 o'clock base. So he needs to get some of his economy reestablished. But right now that army of queens and broodlings still marauding around the map. And Crossy once again moving up. Going to go ahead and take that 12 o'clock location. Some vultures sneaking through. Going to be able, And I love these vultures. Clearing out that drone to that bottom right. Hydralis pouring forward. They're going to go ahead and try to clear mines to again deny a degree of map control in the middle of the map. Backing off. Another Overlord picked off. Terra continuing to macro. It looks like he's managed to get that 6 o'clock base. I'm wondering if he just lifted off. I think he might have just lifted off something. Lifted off his main? Lifted off his main. To go ahead and get mining back up and running in that bottom 6 o'clock base, which is critical. And some more vultures starting to flood through. Right now, despite victories a little bit earlier, Terror, or sorry, I should say Crossy, I think falling a bit behind. Because that's two base Terran versus essentially one, and a, one base Zerg. And if you look at the supply count, this is not where you want to be against mech. You want to be way ahead in the supply count or just have overwhelming amounts of queens to drop everything. Hydralists are repositioning to the north. They want to try to shut down this 9 o'clock base. Three siege tanks there. The disadvantage for Terra is, is this mech army is very slow. So we see the pink flooding across the map. The queens diving in. Broodlings absolutely everywhere. Obliterating the siege tank line. The Hydralists are going to be able to sneak through and getting to the 9 o'clock, one irradiate, two radiates drop, a second one on the Hydralisks underneath. The Science Vessel is getting picked off as well. SCVs coming off the line, battle SCVs to try to prevent these Hydralisks from doing more damage. And a counterattack as well sneaking through. It looks like it is just going to be Vultures trying to defend the 6 o'clock base. So Crossy trying to be everywhere at once and really task Terra's ability to move this immobile mech army, also flooding across the middle, going to try to continue to whittle that map control by taking out additional turrets. Hydralis engaging the siege tank to the south. Crossy needs to stop this economy, needs to slow it down. Second siege tank from the north, not responding. Some Hydralis getting some additional SCV kills and some additional economic disruption. But despite, ooh, mine going off and blowing out a huge amount of Hydralis, Despite all of this, though, it looks like that 9 o'clock base does down. The 6 o'clock base is still up, and reinforcements are closing the noose on what is left of Crossy's attack force. And Crossy still just sitting, it looks like, well, I didn't count the mineral only, still sitting at three bases. And Terror starting to press in and get aggressive himself. Fully upgraded mech army with a supply count lead. Pushing in, he's going to be able to clear out that 12 o'clock location. It looks like some Hydralists are going to be able to sneak in underneath. And Crossy going to GG just wasn't able to get enough economic damage done to slow Terra down. Overextending a bit with that final attack, and Terra takes it. Great match. Really fun one. And exactly what you want to see out of two high-level players like this. Really fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.